So here we go with part three of mixing a three-piece rock band. The name of the band is Lip. I recorded them right here in my control room, and now we're going through the process of mixing them. This video is part three. If you have not seen part one and two, I will leave a link in the description so you can go watch those videos and catch up to where we're at now. In part one, we treated the drums. In part two, we treated the bass, and that's where we left off. So we're going to get familiar with the tracks here, and then we are going to dig into the guitar. And yes, this is an actual concert shirt that I got at the Guns N' Roses show on August 24th. The date should be somewhere there on the back. It was at Wrigley Field here in Chicago. All right, first let's hear what we got going on and all the tracks where we left them off. We'll solo out the drums just to give them a listen. So now we're going to move on to the guitar tracks. And at the end of part two, I just got done dialing in my Alicia Expressor and the console EQ. This is a very powerful EQ on this console, and I want to play it and then bypass it so you could hear it. So you could hear that it adds the edge and brings up the mids a little bit and the high, and it's aggressive sounding. I like that. And again, the full mix. The guitars are one guitar. It's one guitar player. This is a three-piece band, but I mic'd him multiple times. Here is a picture that I found of when we were tracking. And as you could see, I have a JCM 800 mic'd up, and I have a trainer amp mic'd up, and I use multiple mics on them. So I took all these multiple mics and the JCM 800 mics, I have panned one way. The trainer mics, I have panned another way. Combining them together and spread them across channels 15 and 16. That's what we're hearing here. One guitar player, multiple mic'd, panned different ways. Let's take a look what I got going on in the box. I have the guitars high pass at 70 hertz and I have an auxiliary bus bust over and pan correctly to an auxiliary track that has this Abbey Road Chambers plug-in on it. I have it dialed in just slightly and I have it returning to echo return three and four of my board. So let's hear what it sounds like with it and without it. So here it is with it. Did you hear that quick decay? Here it is without it when I mute it out. A blunt stop it's hardly there but it does add a fullness in the space it adds a perspective to the guitars it adds ambience to the guitars not a lot I don't want a lot of ambience on that I got ambience on the drums I got ambience on the bass I don't want tons of ambience on the guitars because the more I put in there the less detailed the guitars are and I don't want to take away from the detail of the guitars I just want to add a little bit of space to them as you can see I got the reverb right here at 70% I got the wet dry parallel option at 75%. As I return it down to my board, I could dial in how much or little I want right here on my echo returns. Just a little bit goes a long way. If your tracks are recorded correctly, you shouldn't have to go through hell to get them to sound good when it comes mix time. Get it sounding good as you're capturing it. The more you do on the front end, the less you have to do on the back end. As we were recording the album, and come mix time, I really felt like the guitar wasn't detailed enough. It, it, the distortion was there. I couldn't hear the clarity in the chords. I wanted to add something that would help clear up the detail in the guitars. So I had the guitar player overdub a clean guitar track. Let's listen to that track here. Soloed out, I have that going to channel 14. And I added some EQ off the board. Here it is. So what I'm going to do is patch in an 1176. Let's dial it in. As 
as you can see there, the compressor is just doing about four to six dB of gain reduction, keeping it level. I don't want to make it louder. I don't want to make it quieter. I just want to keep it consistent. Let's see what we're doing in the box with this clean tone guitar track. I have uh, EQ on it and it is the Siemens EQ. Just a little bit of low end, a little bit of high end. So now we're going to add the clean tone guitar track in the mix and get it sitting right with the rest of the instruments. And that's what I mean by adding definition to the guitars. Adding little things like that to a session goes a long way. Right when we were about to start tracking, literally last minute, I added the crotch mic and smashed it with the distressor. That mic really made the drums and brought them into a different dimension. Overdubbing this clean guitar track added another dimension to the session. It never hurts to try something. If it doesn't work, I don't have to use it. I can mute out, delete the track, get rid of it. But when it does work, it's a little bit of effort that goes a long way. Now we are gonna hear the mix of the music roll into the dry, untreated, unaffected vocals. And then we're gonna treat the vocals. Let's get started. I use three microphones for the vocals, U87 and a copper tone. This is a lo-fi AM radio sounding mic that is a cool effect. I'm going to get to the vocal part so you could hear what I'm talking about. So let's hear the vocals together. Here we go. Turn down the tracks a little bit because now they're sold out. We can hang low and you could get high and we could fake live. I'm going to mute the U87. You can make me. And I can make mine, and we can sell fire. And that is the copper tone. It is made to sound like an AM radio, no low end. It is an effect mic. And it's perfect for this style of music. I also record snare, mono drum room, and guitars with this mic. Very cool just to have in the room for that kind of effect. Now I'm going to show you how I'm going to treat these vocals in the box before I start adding outboard gear. The first thing I'm going to do is come up here and pull up my two band Renaissance EQ and high pass at around 60 hertz. I'm only going to do that for the U87 track. I'm not going to do it for the copper tone track. The reason why is the copper tone track is already high passing a bunch of low end, so I don't need to worry about that. I am also going to add the Renaissance Vox which is probably one of my top three plugins. I'm going to go to my presets, Riot Vocal 1, boom, right there. Drag this down a little bit to about 8.2. There we go. And uh, I'm also going to drag that Renaissance box over to the Copper Tone track. And what the Renaissance box does is bring the vocals and holds them sort of up front. Hey, let's hear that now. We can hang low, and you can get high, and we can make life. Now I am going to set up an auxiliary track, and this is very important. You do not need a console. You do not need any outboard gear. You do not need a summing mixer. You should be setting up auxiliary tracks and doing this in the box, and I'm going to show you how I do it, exactly what I did on the guitars. So I'm going to come right here and go to bus. One, two, three, four, and five, and six are already taken up. I got stuff on drums, stuff on guitars. I'm going to go to bus seven and eight. And then I'm going to raise the volume and lower it to about negative 6.2. I'm going to take that auxiliary and drag it over to the copper tone track. All right. Now I am going to bring up a stereo 
Augs track. And I like to have my effect tracks yellow. So I'll change that to yellow. And now I'm going to make sure that the bus assignments are right. I want the inputs to be bus 7 and 8. And I want the outputs to be 21 and 22. I got two faders right here I could use. So I'm going to go to 21 and 22. And there I go. I have it set up. An auxiliary stereo bus for vocals. First, I'm going to add an EQ and high pass to very, very, very sub lows at like 33 hertz because I don't want no muddiness in my effect track. Then I'm going to add the little micro ship. We can hang low and you could get high and we could fake live. I like that. Let's hear that in the mix. Make sure our volumes aren't getting too crazy. We can hang low. I'm going to move the micro shift down and before that I want to insert a decapitator. So here is the mighty decapitator and let me just low cut, high cut, boost the tone a tad bit, bring back the wet dry. Let's hear this. We can hang low. Now we're going to add some outboard compression and some EQ and get this vocal track to really sit in the mix. So right now I am going to patch in the gate stay level and a API 550 EQ for the vocals. And for the copper tone track, I am not going to patch in any compression or EQ. I am just going to leave that completely unaffected and just dial it into the mix where I want it. I could also automate it in the box. This is an original gate stay level from the 50s. And I had it completely refurbished. So recapped with the exact era capacitors. And I absolutely love this compressor. It sounds amazing on so many things. It came with two modes, single recovery, and double recovery time. Then I had my tech add a third faster recovery time because I felt for some vocals and some instruments, the recovery time was too slow. This three-way switch in the top position, it recovers much faster. Let me show you an example of that right now. So let's go to the slowest recovery time, which is double the recovery time. Pay attention to the needle and I'll drive it up a lot so the it throws the needle up to about maybe 10 or 15 dB of gain reduction. Here we go. We can hang low and you could get high. And, and look how slow it's recovering. Very, very, very slow. Now I'm going to go to the single recovery mode. You could already see it dropping faster. Let's do that again. Let's wait till it gets back down to zero. And they used to use these for full radio station broadcasts this would be the last piece it hit to get it to go to the antenna right here let's try that again and now it's in single recovery mode we can hang low and look how much faster it's dropping now and then we're going to go to my mod and it's even faster watch this we can boom much faster recovery time. We're going to dial it in. Let me unsolo the vocals. We can hang low and you could get high and we could fake loud. You can make me and I can make mine and we can sell fire. I'm a set back and you could get by if all we do is lie. We could try one, but you would be Oh, it sounds very cool with the slower recovery time. We can hang low and you can get high and we can fake live. Oh, it's just holding on to it. Let's try the slowest recovery time. We can hang low and you can get high and we can fake live. I like the single recovery time. Let's do that again. We can hang low and you can get high. 
Very cool. We're going to leave it there. Now, coming out of the gate stay level on the vocals, I have an original 550 EQ. And this is one of my absolute favorite EQs. We're going to dial this in right now to the vocals. We can hang low, and you could get high, and we could fake lie. You can make me, and I can make mine, and we could sell fire. I'm a setback, and you could get by if all we do is lie. Now we're going to dial it in to the mix. We can hang low. I heard something I want to do really fast. I'm going to pull up on the main vocal track, Fab Filter Pro Q3, and I'm just going to sort of play it and massage this uh, vocal with this EQ. So here we go. We can hang low and you can get high and we can fake life. You can make me and I can make mine and we can sell fire. I added the gate stay level, added the 550 EQ. In the box, you've seen how I treated it. Then additionally, at the very end, I heard that it needed some massaging, and that Pro Q3 never disappoints. Pulled out a little 200, that little low mid mud, boosted a little bit of top end, cut some extreme lows. I feel like the vocal's sitting in place better now. It still needs some treatment volume-wise, though and effect. I'm going to add an outboard effect. The Effectron 2. So right now I have Echo Send 1 going up to the Effectron and returning to Echo Return number 1 and I have that straight up the center. I'm going to dial in the Effectron to try and get a cool vocal effect that we could sort of tuck underneath the vocals in the mix. We can hang low, and you could get high, and we could fake lie. You can make me, and I can make mine, and we could sell fire. I'm a setback, and you could get by, if all we do is lie. We could try one, but two would be fun, and we would get undone. We can hang low, and you could get high, and we could fake lie. There it is. Let's dial that in the mix. We can hang low, and you could get high. And that's where the backup vocals come in. And I am going to use the fat soul for the backup vocals. Let me get to this point where the backup vocals come in here. I'm going to solo those out real fast. He don't want to lie. He don't want to try. He don't want to fly. He don't want to lie. He don't want to try. He don't want to fly. He don't want to lie. He don't want to try. He don't
All right, and that's where you could really hear like the Nirvana bleach influence in this particular song. Uh, let me dial in with all the tracks. Here we go. the council EQ here we go just add in that presence add in that bite so now what I'm gonna do is just start from the beginning play the song massage the faders inside and outside of Pro Tools do any last-minute tweaks that I feel like it needs I'm gonna listen to the mix and react so I might make some adjustments to some of the plugins I might make some adjustments to some of the outboard gear, and I'm just going to sort of see how I feel about the whole mix from start to finish. I know exactly what I think it needs, and that is automation. We are going to go to, and I am going to zoom in on two parts that I really feel like it needs to be automated. There is group backup vocals, like I explained, that's coming to channel 21 and 22, and then there's a single backup vocal that the bass player is doing right here. And he's doing some cool stuff in the background that doesn't necessarily sound perfectly in key, but it does add to the song. So as the song's going and the singer's singing, the bassist is jumping in and doing stuff like this. And we would get on John. And now let's listen to that in the mix. It's hardly there, but it is there. So it would be fun and we would get on So I'm going to automate that up just to be a little bit more present. And that's simple enough because I'm just going to go to volume here. It's not the get undone part that I want to automate up. It's the cool ooh that he did there. And I don't want it to be too present because it is out of key. I want it to be just present enough to where I feel it a little more. That's all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it come up and then just slope back down. Let's hear it. So it be fun and we would get All right, so I wanted automation there, and that's already done. We just did that together. Okay, so I feel like the vocals need to be automated right here in this part. Yeah. All, right. He don't he All right, so what I'm going to do with there is I'm going to automate the VCA channel. So that's going to take care of all those vocals. So here's the VCA. Let me highlight that for you right here. So let's see here. We can hang low and you can get high. So that's the automation that I heard and that I'm going to leave in there. I think we're at a good point with this mix right now. As you know, a mix is never done. You can mix for eternity and you hit the point where you're doing more harm than good. I don't think we're anywhere near that point right now, but I do feel like we're in a good enough spot to do a print and consider it final. Thank you for those that watched part one, part two, and stuck through all the way here to part three. I appreciate all of you. Everyone that watches my videos, likes, subscribes, and comments. That's what motivates me to make videos like this. And please take the mix that we did here and compare it side by side with professionally released albums with the same style of music. And compare ours to theirs. You'd be surprised what guys like you and I could accomplish. Thank you for watching. Take care.